There's a moment in any deep dive into prehistoric survival where you realize something humbling. Human beings survive for hundreds of thousands of years without lighters, ferro rods, matches, or even the idea of a fire kit. Fire wasn't an accessory. It was life. Warmth, cooking, light, tool-making, protection, and social bonding. All of it depended on the ability to coax flame from raw nature. And what's even more astonishing is that Neanderthals were not only capable of this, they mastered a method that is still, to this day, one of the most reliable forms of primitive fire-starting. This wasn't mythology or speculation. Archaeological evidence shows they used a technique stronger, faster, and more dependable than friction fire. Once you understand this ancient method, you'll see why it is still one of the smartest techniques any modern survivalist can learn. The first key to understanding Neanderthal firecraft is recognizing the materials they relied on. For decades, researchers assumed Neanderthals used only friction-based methods. But discoveries at European sites overturned that idea. They were using pyrite and flint together to create sparks. Pyrite, also known historically as firestone, shatters into tiny glowing fragments when struck with a hard mineral such as flint. Unlike steel, which didn't exist yet, pyrite is a natural iron sulphide mineral that ignites tinder far more readily than many modern spark-based tools. What made this method so effective wasn't just the sparks, it was the nature of the sparks themselves. Sparks from pyrite are hotter than most friction-derived embers, and Neanderthals combined this with tinder that caught at extremely low temperatures, such as soft plant fibers, dried fungus, or shredded bark. To see how this functions in practice, you'd try striking a piece of flint against pyrite with a small nest of tinder beneath, right? Carefully gather the sparks into one central point. The moment a glowing fragment lands, you keep feeding it gently with breath until it forms a stable ember. This is the same principle Neanderthals relied on, and it works even when conditions are damp or cold. Conditions where friction fire becomes extremely challenging, honestly. The second advantage of the Neanderthal method is, well, its resilience in poor weather. Friction fire, bow drill, hand drill, fire plough requires dry wood, good technique, and stamina. Even in ideal conditions, success is never guaranteed. In wet climates or in freezing temperatures, friction fire becomes a test of patience, bordering on misery. Pyrite and flint spark making is different. Minerals do not absorb moisture. They don't swell, warp, or soften. If you can keep your tinder dry, your fire-starting tools will perform consistently. This reliability explains why archaeological sites show evidence of Neanderthal fire use even in glacial periods. They had mastered a method that didn't fail when the world froze around them. A practical application of this lesson is simple, really. If you ever build an emergency fire kit with natural materials, pair your flint with pyrite or marcasite, store them with a dry tinder source, and you've got a method that works in nearly any environment. Neanderthals solved a problem modern survivalists still struggle with. Dependable fire in miserable conditions. The third insight comes from how Neanderthals prepared and stored their tinder. They weren't just casually grabbing grass at the last minute, you know. They selected specific tinders with a high likelihood of ignition. Some sites show evidence of bracket fungi, 
particularly species that form dense, fibrous interiors which smolder beautifully. Others suggest shredded inner bark, soft seed heads, and dried plant pith. The key here is that Neanderthals treated tinder as a material to be processed ahead of time, not scavenged under stress. You can apply this today by building your own primitive tinder bundle. Start with plant fibers or fungus, then process them until they fluff into a soft nest. Carrying a prepared tinder bundle on a hike may feel a bit excessive, but it teaches the same discipline prehistoric people lived by. Fire begins long before the spark. The fourth piece of the puzzle is how Neanderthals built their early flame around the ember. Once a spark caught in the tinder fungus or fibre, they didn't force the flame. They nurtured the ember, letting it grow gradually. This is, honestly, one of the most overlooked aspects of ancient firecraft. Most beginners blow too hard and extinguish their ember before it matures. Neanderthals use controlled breath, cupping the ember in their hands or shielding it behind natural windbreaks. The ember grew hotter and larger until it could ignite twigs, bark curls, and eventually larger fuel. This technique is easily practiced today. Once you create your ember, place it gently inside your tinder nest and slowly feed it air. Keep your movements deliberate and steady. The ember will reward patience far faster than brute force. The final and perhaps the most important lesson from Neanderthal firecraft is, well, the mindset behind it. They approach fire as something you maintain, not something you constantly restart. Evidence from cave sites suggests they carried embers from one location to another using slow-burning tinder such as fungi. They kept coals alive through the night under ash. They understood the work that fire required, and that understanding really shaped their day-to-day -day survival. Modern survivalists often forget this, you know. We tend to think of fire as a one-time task. Start it, use it, extinguish it. But maintaining fire over long periods is often easier than restarting it multiple times under pressure. If you plan to stay in the same camp for more than a night, practice the Neanderthal principle, save embers. Bury them under ash to preserve them and revive them in the morning with small fuel and breath. It's honestly one of the simplest ways to conserve effort, calories and time. The reason this ancient method still matters is because it keeps us connected to the most fundamental survival skill humans ever developed. It works in the rain, it works in the cold, it works when modern tools fail, and it teaches patience, precision and resourcefulness, the same traits that kept early humans alive long before civilization appeared. If you enjoyed this deep dive into ancient firecraft and want more historically grounded survival wisdom, make sure you subscribe to the channel, share this video with someone who loves real fieldcraft history, and help keep this community growing strong.